from first day of animations, the artists try to combine music, sound, and animations together and synchronize this. Or uh, Walt Disney's team uh, bought Wally or other animations, music video, anything. So we always try to do. So in this video, what we're going to do is take a stable diffusion, the forum, and synchronize this with the music. We'll see how we can synchronize, how we can make it naturally work together. We'll utilize the different applications for this, and I will provide link down below for you so you can check them. We're going to use it stable diffusion, automatic installation. If you don't have it on your machine, I'll provide link also for you to follow up and install this on your local machine. As well, we'll go and use it the form. And this is part of extensions for the stable diffusion. As well, I will provide link down below or on the side for you to check this video and install it on your machine. So now, hopefully everything installed, we inside the stable diffusion in the forum tab. On the first screen with the right, we have our general settings. Here we can modify width and height. I will leave it as default because we don't go reference to any movie and it will optimize a little bit faster render. Steps, we still leave it 25 and rest will go as we work together. So let's go ahead and start with our prompt. The prompt, this is by default what we're going to change and let's go just put it maybe um, red ball. Okay, This is very simple, just a red ball as example, the next we need to animate this. To animate, we have several options. If we go on keyframe down below with the motions, you'll notice we have a zoom, we have an angle, we also have a translation move left or right, up and down, and this is because it's two dimensional. If we switch in the three dimensional mode, then you'll notice we'll start having also a Z back and forward. But I think for simplicity and just examples, we stick with 2D. Notice what we have here. Also, all of these properties we can modify. So, for example, it's look a little bit complex in the zoom, but it's just no acceleration of the zoom, so we don't worry about this. In fact, we can also just remove everything like this. And zero and one, this is mean zoom will stay. So let's look very fast to see what we have. This is first value, it's indicate the frame. And other ones, it's a value for this frame. If it's referred to zoom, zoom one it just stay on one place two the maximum will go very fast zoom in and the zero point now zoom out so it's it's kind of a work this way um and we'll experiment with this but keep in mind the one is no zoom at all and of course the more value is going one way or another it will increase in speed one way or another if we look also on translation X and Y, this is representing in the pixels. So it's meaning if we have a frame zero, it's meaning frame does not move anywhere. If we say 10 frame and we'll say 50, that will meaning on a frame 10, we must move 50 pixels right way. If we have it minus, it will go in opposite way from that. Same things can apply to X and Y. This is a very simple animations for the camera. Again, this is not animation for the subject. This is animations for the camera itself. Animate subject, we need to go inside the prompt and modify here. Remember, we put it red ball. So if I put it comma and say frame, for example, 60, and we have it blue cube, so it's meaning in this case that at frame 60, it's need to be blue cube convert to this. And again, if we another ones, and then we'll say, let's go frame 100. And we'll just put it maybe green pyramid. So on that case, we start with the red ball that need MRF, and that's what's happening It's MRFing around. Or if we're using zoom, it will zoom into this blue cube green pyramid so this is very basic animations remember in the prompt we are animating the object and a keyframe we are animating camera itself okay so let's go ahead and try to render see what we have it before we jump i want also modify a little bit on the output by default it says 15 frames i will set 20 frames because 
Usually when I did my animations, traditional animations, we're doing it 24 frames and we'll skip every frame. So it's 12 frames per second. And actually here will be something similar because we have a 12 frames here. But if we look in the um, properties like keyframe, you'll notice we have it cadence as a two. And this is how many frames between will not be directly diffused. So it's meaning if you have it frame one, frame uh, three, again, an example of it's one frame, one and three, two, it will diffuse between two frames. So it is a little bit speed up on the time and give it also somewhat look similarity on different frames. So you can increase, but be careful because if you have it too much, the motions won't be translated and its object will still stay. And here a little bit example. This is done with a two and you can see we still seeing, of course, a little bit flickering, but we have a motion on the head and with the same motions when we did with other one, object does not move it, it's a stay. This is more apply if of course we're using control net or other things, but in general, just keep it in mind, you will limit it to some motions on this case. Okay. So we stop this one. We said with prompts, we don't worry about in session control or hybrid video in this case. So we don't. Well, what we needed is set our output and we're ready to render. So let's go ahead and click generate. Okay, when our animation is done, we can click preload preview. And here's animation. You can see we start with the ball and then it's converting to our square like right there you see the squares converting and triangle so it is does not try convert very fast and instantly but it does conversion happen and this is keep in mind that time of the morphing it does not happen instantly so when we do with a zoom in other things and um, or transforming we need kind of pay attention to what will happen to this okay now we kind of look on some animations. Let's see how we can synchronize with the sound. If we're going to keyframe and we're going on motion, the first simple, I want to work with a zoom. So I want to be sure the zoom is going to boom, boom, zoom to the music that I'm creating. For this, we needed another software. The easiest way is just look, what is your music? How many beats per second? But what if it's in consistency? What is if it different? Then they have it another applications. The one of them is a frame sync. So you can see when it's done loading and let's restart. Let's reload it and do from the beginning. So we have it step by step. So by, by the way, beside the frame sync, you have a different options like after keyframe or your local installations. All of these links I will provide down below. But for this example, we'll just use it frame sync. So right here we open. Now we need to choose a file on which will analyze uh, happen the analyze bit and other stuff. So we went and we select dancing loop. Let's listen. So there's our music. And this is the beat. Notice it's not necessarily going by 120 up and down. If you're interested, you could actually just create 120 specific beat up and down, but we want to use the normal wave link. Let's look over what we have at this point. You'll notice we have our zoom, we have our frame sync. Here's our frame rate, and I want set to 12 frame rate. So we want to reduce it also. Okay, let's go down. We have a 120 frame count. It's what we're going to use. And if we look down on the bottom, you notice right here, it's actually our frame. And that's what we present, which is kind of done very good. It does for the diffusion already. You notice right here, our frame and value. But value is not correctly representing what we need to use because values are different depending on what we're using. If we're using value for the zoom, you remember zoom, it will be from two, oh, sorry, from yeah, two to zero. Okay. Anywhere from there, um, and it's a zoom in or zoom out. Okay. If we're using this value, for example, for translations or moving X and Y, this can be from minus one or minus two. Uh, well, it's a, and a pixel, so it will represent different. So if I want to move by 50 pixels, I need to put it 50 so it will move by 50 pixels. So value is quite a bit different on this case. And because of that, we need to adjust. Adjusting, we can use it by shift and by amplitude. 
So amplitude, it's how big lowest and highest number is. And I do like sometimes bring down amplitude on this case. So we'll just go 0.2 set. And as we change, you can see right here the difference. It's not that big, which is actually very good because if it's on a zoom example, very big, you'll notice it's very dramatic changes jumping back and forth. So we don't want that. Next band, it's what allowed us to um, how much it's happened. So let's look on a band and you can see increasing, decreasing value this way. We'll leave it just one, but we need to use the shift up and down to increase value. For example, if my zoom, I want to have it number one, for example, just to not moving at the beginning, then I'll take and I'll put it my shift up actually. So let's go ahead and we'll go all the way up to maybe about 1.1. Okay, if we do 1.1, you'll notice the value sometimes bigger. And also, notice what is happening right here. We have it all of these different frames and that these provide 300 something. Even we copy just 220, it's of each frame. And if we use this, it's too many frames. It will be too noisy, does not render. So what we're looking for, it is again, because 12 frames per second, probably best way to do it, just take only this 0, 12, 24, 36, just those frames and skip it. It will provide the smoothest animations, but at the same time, it will see very nice movements for each second of the beat. And again, this is based on 120 frames per second. And by the way, our frames and tempo accidentally matching, which is kind of nice because we have tempo, it's 120 beats per second. Okay, so we set up this. Let's go ahead and um, take our altitude a little bit more down, maybe. Maybe to one and pop up this to about one, maybe one point. This. I think this will work. So in this case, we'll have it a very nice smooth and it's a zooming. Notice right here on the two, we're going 0 0.9, but I don't care. Mostly what I care, it's this 120, 106. So this one and other one discarded. If you want to process all frames, it's fine. Just go click copy frame. And when you're going inside the zoom, select this and paste it. So you'll have it all frames and zoom set for this. But how I said before, I want a little bit um, different. So I'm going to select and I'm going to remove, like, for example, from here up to 12. So we'll go delete this and just to synchronize and make them a little bit smaller and smoother. Okay. What are we going to do? There you go. We'll just use this string. Also, you know what? Let's do this. Let's change our prompt to something a little bit more fun. So instead this, we're just going and create one. We'll go create psychedelic kaleidoscope. Yellow, orange, purple, red. So this is just specified colors. And by the way, if you needed to see what you have, what will cap, always what I'm doing, I'm going to the text to image on the same model. I'm just going to paste this here. We'll set same 25 steps. And we'll just go and click generate. So this way I can preview. And if I like how it's look, if I'm okay with this, I'm just go ahead and take a seed, press on this recycle icon, copy seed, and we're going back to our deform, run, and we'll pasting right here with the seed, we'll pasting. So in the case, if you like how it's look, and it's mostly will be related if you animate the person or uh, some other object you want the consistency. With Kaleidoscope, it will be a little bit easy. Not, don't worry about this, but just in case we'll put it there just as experiment. So let's go over key where we have it. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it 120 frames and we'll put it same string. So this is all default zoom. We have to also transform X uh, 0 0.5 and it's ke help keeping on center. Okay, so right here in the image, it's what happened. If you reset those to the zeros, you can see it's going to this top corner animations. And if we recenter all the time, it's what the uh, transform, it just keep it on the middle and zoom into the center. So this is all what it does. 
and we'll keep it those 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so middle of the dot for us okay 120 that is fine we'll go with the verify prompts okay uh, let's go to output and output we can see we have a 12 frames we could add also soundtrack and uh, for this let's go ahead try it we'll go click file that's what sound we have it and next we need a kind of put a correct path to your so i'm just going from my local machine install here and we'll have it file okay add soundtrack all okay let's go ahead now and generate okay so right here it's done let's preview and i'll take sound a bit down notice it does it does seems like accelerating in some moments but it's not total feel animations and the reason is because if we look on our keyframes and this is more related to the animations principles well look our zoom is actually almost always it's just slightly accelerating or more accelerating but we don't see that's different so the one thing what we want to with this you remember like it's going waves we don't have the wave that going down so we don't slow ours to slow down what we need to do is going and create like points of the freeze almost between the frames. So what I mean by this, we'll go in the zoom and we'll add like zero frame. What we have before, we add on the middle frame six, one. So no zoom. You remember one, it's a stop. So that's what we do. We're going back and we're creating more like this kind of animations up and down. So it's accelerating, except the top peak is different. Top peak is depend on the intensity so some will be very fast some slow so it's acceleration still going with the sound as we're creating but we're creating these waves now to be a bit better okay i think this is good for test let's go ahead generate now this as well and we'll compare how now with these waves how it's will going to look. okay so let's go ahead preview and you can see how the to the music it's actually stop accelerating based on a beat and sometimes it's stop accelerating faster slower all the stuff because we have this uh, music because we have this um, acceleration in some cases small in some cases very large so and this is kind of work with us of course, to achieve the best result, you need experiment. So what I mean by experiment, you need going and um, try to work with your amplitude, shift down, up and down, what you need to create. As well, we created this one and we're using for the zoom, but we can also moving, can move up, down, we can move camera around, Z rotation. So it's a lot of other ones, three dimensional or two dimensionals we can do with the camera. So in this case, we can take and implement build um, motions based on amplitude. Of course, if we're using this for the translation the X and Y, we need to modify this because you remember this is a representation of the pixels. So if I need it, I need more like 20 pixels, then I definitely need it increase, go higher, maybe about this high, increase amplitude, and sometimes we can go very crazy increase of our amplitude so we have a definitely more visible effect on how it's move for example if we leave it just like this 8 10 9 pixels so let's go ahead and do this way we can actually copy those and use them as well so let's go ahead and do this let's go increase our amplitude to about five points or five pixels in this case if we're using shifting and We'll just bring this a little bit higher, maybe to around eight. On this case, our switch 10 pixels, 12. Again, remember, you can do this per each frame, how fast you can move it. But if we do per each frame, it means each frame need to move that fast. It will be crazy, um, not <laughs> looking very good, but we need a little bit smooth. So if at every second, or we even can reduce it. But I think every second, like right here, you can see it's go up, down. So about every second, it is uh, creating a little bit better. Because we have a 10, 12, you see the peaks happening, down, peaks, down. So it's 
happen this way. You know, even we create amplitude more, like maybe amplitude of the 10, not 110, then we'll see even bigger difference between this. And of course, if we're doing this, we need to go and reduce to seven. So just keep it a little bit, but this is give it better amplitude, more accelerations and stopping. That's what we'll have it in this case. And it's worked very well for um, moving back and forward. For the zoom, it's need to adjust a little bit different. Okay, let's go ahead and copy these values. Again, I'm just copying uh, what I have it, and I want to extract just only those, again, uh, frames that is on the far left. So we're going to extract those frames. Okay, so we're going and put those inside our area. We'll leave it zoom right here. We'll just move it. And you know what? Let's modify. Let's go also in the prompt and make something different. Let's go maybe um, set green forest lake flowers haze clouds pine trees something you know forest is something interesting um one thing i want point anytime when we zoom and you maybe notice let's look right here see how it will sharp and when we go closer to the end it's very blurry and let me show you a little bit more example. So right here is original image. And when we start playing, you'll notice as we're going, it's become more smudgy and blurry and lost details. And the reason why it's happening, because when we shift pixels, it's based on previous image. And we have thus diffusion, the two images blending. So and it's creating all this smudging. To fix this, we actually have it sharpness or anti-blur. And this example, what's happening when we enable, you can see to the end, we still have a sharper line. We need to be careful because if we're using too much or a lot, you will start having those kind of line patterns. But to fix this problem where we have it, let's go back to our keyframe and down below we have it anti-blur. So we'll click right there. By default, it's set zero one. What I want to do, it's on the 10th frame. It's when the blur start happening. I want point zero point three. So, and maybe, maybe on the frame 90, I want to add 0 0.4. So just a little bit more sharpness increase. I don't want to go too crazy, but I think this will provide good sharpness to all video for us. Okay, we'll check what we have. And other things what I kind of recommend because um, we're using on zero frame and when it's continued, it start losing coherency or related so what do we want to do we want to take our prompt okay even using same prompt if you're using same prompt you want to use this in couple other places so in this case it's kind of we regenerated same idea or you can change and you can create um, some animated characters or other things i'll show you some example afterwards this but let's create this way so overall i want to just check we'll use it normal square resolutions uh, we still have it using our seed which is help a little bit but i think in this current situations we don't need it seed so we'll set minus one random because we're generating forest not the uh, things we created before okay let's go ahead keyframe and we set our keyframe where's our motion right here we have it our zoom set as before and we also have it our x moving which is maybe a little bit fast we'll see how it's come up so we'll Notice on a zoom, I'm just accelerating or slow down. I'm not stopping all the way and moving. So it will become, because if we stop on the motion left and right, it will jerk. It does not look very good. So we want kind of continuous zoom, maybe just acceleration, slow down, go this way. But we want on a zoom going with the music kind of increasing. So we'll see how that will come up both together. We don't worry about um, our noise schedule we could increase a little bit more on the noise if we need it but i think that will work just fine um and anti-blur so we add a little bit more anti-blurring so everything is good let's go to our i'm sorry let's go to our output just verify 12 frames we still using same music all good let's go ahead and click generate sometimes you may have an error when you start generating and just keep it in um 
attention, pay attention a little bit more to those commas. And I notice sometimes uh, maybe it's too small. I lose add extra comma and its error will come up or some bracket. So this is does not have a very good uh, like validator inside. So just pay attention in a structure how you build it. And normally it's going keyframe number, column and value passing this and all of those keyframes separated by comma. Okay, so right here it's done. Let's go preview. And you can see it does, um, we apply movements and we apply zoom as well. Going to correspond to the music when it's a bit happening. Of course, it will require a little bit more adjusting and tweaking with all this stuff, but it is already a helpful tool for us to create this way. Um, you also could use it technically with this with control net, but problem is because how control net work with the zoom or movements, it's go back and try to restore. And what's happening afterwards, you end up with a, something like this. You can see how it's tried to zoom and restore it. So it's not necessarily will work. It may be very good effect. Sometimes if you try to do something unusual, maybe some effect of the zooming or stars may flying. I don't know, whatever is your imagination, creativity can go in with the music. So you can do this with control net if you need it and with animation portraits and other stuff. But you can see it was very weird effect was giving. Okay, so I hope you find this video interesting and learn something new techniques. Let me know if you have some new recommendations or what else you want to see. And I'm definitely going to explore more. I have some other ideas how to um, embed with the reference images so we can have a very um, consistent result in the end between different images. So be sure you subscribe to the channel, click notification button so you know when those new videos come out. And thank you for your great support.